Nine o'clock, uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, looks like all our county planning commissioners are here today and Nancy Troutman's representing the county uh, board. Uh, approval of the July 25th minutes. Uh, did everyone get a chance to review it? And uh, if so, uh, yeah. any additions, corrections, deletions? None, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, approval of the agenda. Today we have uh, agenda is 21 items. Um, any additions to the agenda or changes from staff? Nothing from staff. If not, and entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, <coughs> consent calendar. Today's consent calendar is items 3 through 14. And uh, I'll read the, uh, I think it's on the, if you grab the agenda in the back for the audience. And uh, anyway, the following items have been placed on the consent calendar for action to be taken at all items in accordance with the staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent calendar by the planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission are recommendations to the Pantin County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. And I always throw in the caveat, uh, conditional use permits uh, were the final unless it's appealed to the county board. So, but those aren't automatically going to the county board on conditional use permits. And with that, Cassie, would you uh, read the consent items three through 14 for the record, and then we'll see if anyone wants to pull any items. Yes, sir. Cassie Bolstead, Assistant Planning Director. Item three is conditional use permit review 9048 for Kate Roseland to review a single wide manufactured home as a caretaker's residence in a suburban residential district. And staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 9048 with four conditions. Item number four, conditional use permit review 0228 for Richard and Leanne Jensen to review a bed and breakfast in a limited agriculture district slash low density residential district. And staff recommends to end conditional use permit 0228 with the applicant's concurrence. <coughs> Item five, conditional use permit review 0243 for Kay Knock and Judith Welsh to review an assisted living facility for 21 elderly residents in a general commercial district. Staff recommends to end conditional use permit 0243 with the property owner's concurrence. Item six, conditional use permit review 0435 for Joe Thurberg to review 10 30 foot by 150 foot storage buildings in a general commercial district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 0435 with 12 conditions. Item seven, conditional use permit review 1005 for Daisy Enterprise LLC to review an RV park and, our, and tent camping sites in a highway service district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1005 with 21 conditions. Item eight, conditional use permit review 1424 for Lawrence Meager and Margaret Shawcraft to review a single wide mobile home as a single family residence in a low density residential district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1424 with six conditions. Item number nine, conditional use permit review 1501 for Sherry Tonner to review a single wide mobile home to be used as a single family residence while constructing a single family residence in a general agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1501 with 11 conditions. Item 10, conditional use permit 1621 for Jeff Little, um, the Little Family Trust, to allow an accessory structure, a barn prior to a primary structure, and also allow an RV to be used as temporary living quarters during future construction of the barn and a single family residence on the subject property in a general agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 1621 with 19 conditions. Item number 11 is conditional use permit 1623 for Charles and Mary Pringle to allow a recreational vehicle to be used as temporary living quarters during the summer months on the subject property in a low density residential district. Staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 1623 with 12 conditions. Item 12, conditional use permit 1625 for Thrive Properties LLC. Alvin or Sharon Gullickson are the owners to allow for a vacation home rental on the subject property in a low density residential district. 
Staff recommends to continue conditional use permit 1625 to the September 6, 2016 Planning Commission meeting. Item 13, road name, Norris Peak Lane, um, to name a 66-foot wide right-of-way providing access to properties located in sections 30 and 31. Staff recommends approval of the road name, Norris Peak Lane. And item 14 is construction permit 1512 for Mitch Morris to strip topsoil and perform minor grading and leveling to be used as a parking or storage area and stockpile recycled asphalt material to be used as a base for the parking lot. Staff recommends to end construction permit 1512. Is the staff desiring to pull any of those items? No. Anyone on the Planning Commission wanting to pull any of the items? I'd like to pull item six for a quick question. Okay. Uh, anyone in the audience that'd like to pull any of the items that were just read into the record? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve Consent calendar with items three through five and seven through 14. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item six. Uh, since I asked to pull that, I guess I'll, uh, my, it's, uh, I'm just kind of curious on the staff review. Um, basically, that's been in, an inactive conditional use permit for 12 years. Has, was there any discussion about terminating it this time? I, it looks like we're giving them another, uh, adding the caveat of nothing's done in two years and uh, that was there any discussion of ending it sooner? Yes, it's my understanding that there was discussion of ending it this time. However, the applicant asked for it to be continued one more time. Um, he stated, to my understanding, that he has buyers that are potentially interested in it and wanting to pursue the storage units. So um, he was given one final chance to go through with that um, sale and establish the storage units. Otherwise, um, it's my understanding that PJ talked with him about ending it after this. Mr. Chair, so if the, is he wanting to build them before he transfers or because upon transfer of ownership, then that CUP ends? Right. Um, I'm not sure the specifics. He had spoken with PJ. I just know that part of the conversation was him having an interested buyer in the property and the storage, establishing the storage units was part of, of that I'm not sure what the entire conversation okay. was, to be honest with you. That's it does kind, kind of, of a, bother me that I thought that too. Yeah, that's the concern I had is, I mean, we don't well, know. I continue it. If yeah. this, this is the same property that they were trying to put the cell tower on. Yes, correct. correct yes. Oh. And, he, and there's kind of always been a continuous issue there. And, you know, with junk <laughs> and with neighbor issues and so on. And, and, and um, I would just not want to have him think, even though it says this in here, I'm not sure he, I, I think he probably thinks, well, I'll just sell it with this CUP and then they can build it. That, that's the concern I had. And I guess the other concern I had is when going through the cell tower, a lot of the discussion was the visual aspects of the cell tower. And I guess, you know, the, everybody's got their own opinion. I'd rather see a cell tower there than storage buildings yeah. on, on Highway 44. It's a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I can't imagine that the neighborhood is going to be real pleased if those go up. I mean, I know he's got a permit now, but he's not acted for 12 years. And so I would think the neighborhood is thinking it's not going to happen. Yeah, I, and, I agree. Uh, oh. And he's thinking it will yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he sells it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just... Um, at the same okay. time, the applicant's not here, right? No. Uh, and I, no. And I would be hesitant to terminate it without him having some chance, I guess. I, yeah. uh, I would like to see a recommendation to end the conditional use permit, but continue it to the next meeting to give the applicant a chance to come forward. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Can staff ask if you're going to continue it, that it be continued to the September 6th meeting? PJ will be back um, next week, but I don't know if the 22nd will give him time to 
talk with the applicant and sure. discuss all of that kind of stuff. So I would ask that it be continued to the September 6th meeting to give PJ additional time to, yeah. to talk with the applicant about what his concrete plan is. Okay. Well, unless anyone <laughs> else wants to forward a motion, I guess, since I asked to pull the item. Mm -hmm. Isn't the 6th County Commission meeting? That's the um, first Tuesday. Whatever that first meeting is. Oh. Maybe it's not. Wouldn't be the 6th. Huh? It is 6th the... is Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, but Labor Day is Monday. 12th. Mm -hmm. Ross, Labor Day is Monday the... Yeah, Labor Day is Monday the 5th. Yeah. Okay, Bless yes, you. the 12th. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, the 12th. I, I, then that... There, there is another one where you continued it to September 6th. Did you notice that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't... Oh, it's yeah. lucky we started talking about that. <laughs> We'd have all been in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> we surely would have. <laughs> That yeah. was the one with the bunkhouse. Yeah. Yeah, number 12. Yeah. September 6th. You guys can all come vote on budget that day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't sound as fun. <laughs> um, anyway, like I said, since I pulled it, I'd make a motion to continue it to the September 12th meeting. I'll second that. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. That'll take us to our regular calendar, item 15. Excuse me. Is it, do you have to change your September 12th to, from um, 6th to the 12th in any official way? If not, that's fine. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not really sure how we would go up. Which um, item was that? Number 12. Oh. Number 12. Okay. Do you want a motion to change 12? Let's do it that Let's, way. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we change um, conditional use permit item 12, CU 1625, and continue it to this September 12th meeting. Second. Pro probably officially should pull it from the calendar oh. first. Oh, okay. Oh. I'll make a motion. To, I'll, I'll pull it. Okay. <laughs> anyway. It's been item, pulled. Item 12 is 12, pulled, and we have a motion and second to correct uh, the date on, on item 12. Correct? Yes. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Now we'll go on to 15. Okay. Um, item 15 is conditional use permit review 1423 to review a golf driving range and helipad in a highway service zoning district. Um, I am going to give a little bit of background information on this one just for the two new planning commissioners. Um, the applicant on this is Keystone Adventures. The agent is Andrew Bussey. He is here in the audience today. Um, so the way that this one came about, it was originally approved in July of 2014 with 14 conditions. Um, extended again in March of 2015, um, also again in April of 2016. The Planning Commission's decision from April 11, 2016 was appealed to the Board of Commissioners, and the Board of Commissioners on May 3rd of this year did approve the extension of this conditional use permit with 14 conditions. The reason this is back in front of you today um, is <gasps> that the agent has requested that it be reviewed based on condition number 12, which states that prior to operation of the helipad, this conditional use permit be reviewed in order for specifics about the operation of the helipad to be determined, including hours of operations, number of flights per hour, etc. He is moving forward with trying to get his whole operation established. He has applied for two building permits to construct his commercial visitor center and also a garage with living quarters on the subject property. So he is in the works of trying to keep everything moving forward. So he had asked that this be placed on the agenda. Um, so on August 3rd, staff did speak with Mr. Bussey. Um, he indicated that the commercial helicopter tours and the operation would be limited based on season and operating hours. However, he would like to reserve the ability to partner with outside entities um, such as Life Flight, the National Guard, Forest Service, things like that for various different activities that wouldn't necessarily involve paying patrons using it for recreation and enjoyment. So um, on August 4th, we did receive an email from Mr. Bussey further identifying his operational plans for the helipad, which is included with your staff report. 
Um, at the time of this staff report, we have not received any complaints regarding the conditional use permit or the subject property. Staff did receive one phone call after this um, staff report. It wasn't a phone call regarding um, a concern. It was more of a phone call asking why this wasn't on the consent calendar, why it was actually on the regular agenda. So. Um, staff does recommend, however, to amend condition number one to include two helipads as the applicant has indicated from initial approval that he will have two helipads on the subject property um, with the lower one being utilized for primary takeoff, but he will have an upper helipad as a backup um, to be used when environmental conditions are unsafe to use the lower helipads. So ultimately staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1423 with 19 conditions. And the applicant is here if you have any questions for him. Start off with questions for Cassie. Anyone have questions for staff? Uh, Mr. Bussey, if you wanna, I mean, uh, I assume you've reviewed the conditions or worked with staff on that. Uh, yes, sir. Andrew Bussey, Keystone Adventures. Just like to say hi to the new faces and the old faces on the board. The uh, we ones. have been <laughs> <laughs> more experienced. Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, just to go into a little detail for the new members here today, we did acquire the property in 2014, worked extensively with the planning and zoning department to identify the proper property that we selected. We chose this property in conjunction with the planning department because of its uh, location at the top of the valley versus down in the bottom next to the residents of Keystone. Also because it's zoned highway service. Also because it's located next to Highway 16A, which is obviously the most traveled corridor here as well. And because we have four service property to the west. And uh, in the last month we've spent well, the last few years we've been working to acquire the property surrounding us, and so we've added to our original 21 acres an additional 54 acres, which is immediately southwest and northwest of our property to uh, insulate, isolate, and protect us from any future encroachment in building and to uh, you know, ensure the longevity of the operation so we don't have any of the problems that the current operator has in Keystone with adjacent property owners. So right now we have 75 acres total we encapsulate an additional 30 acres of forest surface, which we completely surround. And so we're going forward with our operation. We've submitted for our building permits, um, and we're currently actively working on the property right now and getting everything ready to go for next year's season kickoff. And so one of the conditions was to come back in and review uh, our hours of operation and our season. We've been working with our immediate neighbors to the southwest and northwest to establish uh, hours of operation in a season that uh, works for everybody. Speaking to the hotel, which is directly next door, uh, he insinuated that the guests will like it. He didn't have any opposition to any restrictions on our hours of operation. The Powder House Lodge, which isn't viewed in the picture further to the south, they requested us 9 to 7. And in addition to that, uh, Holy Smokes Campground also requested 9 to 7. And our neighbors, uh, to the southwest said they couldn't hear anything anyway, so they didn't care. Um, to the northwest, we have had some concerns in the past, and that's what uh, prompted our uh, review in front of the planning uh, commission. And we've been working diligently with those neighbors to try and figure out a solution. You know, we have a little bit of issue with one of the neighbors to the northwest is concerned about privacy and would prefer us to have a louder helicopter to ensure his privacy, and then the other neighbor is concerned about uh, the noise and would prefer the quieter helicopter and doesn't concern, isn't overly concerned with the privacy. We're trying to strike a balance making our flight path directly in between the two resident. We have three residential properties. There were two when we originally bought the property. And so we're going to split the difference between the two of them to ensure even though our neighbors to the south may not be able to hear us that future inhabitants also are respected. And so we're going to stay just north of Ingersoll Peak and give as much uh, distance from the house to the north and to the house to the south and increase our altitude. A uh, little bit of background, we also do rock climbing and hiking guiding. And so that's kind of what prompted this. Um, we're, we're also building a rock climbing wall, which we kind of forget about every once in a while. And so what we're trying to do is strike a balance with the ground-based users and the air-based users that are visiting Mount Rushmore. And so our goal is to get the helicopters out of Keystone, reduce the noise over Mount Rushmore and the surrounding Forest Service lands, 
and preserve uh, the habitat for the people on the ground as well as maximize the enjoyment for the users from the air. So that's a little bit of the background. Um, we have worked extensively with Cassie in trying to come up with these conditions. Uh, we're in complete agreement. I know you guys had requested um, limiting the number of iterations. And with my research and experience up there, it's been difficult for the federal government to regulate the number of iterations going into the national park. And we thought we came up with a plan as far as reducing the noise and the impact would be to limit the number of aircraft. And that's where we came up with two. Uh, obviously, it's very congested up there this week. And there are quite a few helicopters. And it's um, probably too much. And so as far as being respectful, of the people on the ground and balancing out the needs of the business, we agreed to limiting our aircraft to two and going with the quieter aircraft as well. Questions for Andrew? The picture that shows that outline, you said you've acquired additional property, right? Correct. Th that's just the original 20 acres or so, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, so if you look at the plat, directly south and west of the hotel and then we're counterclockwise at Cassie. Because I think you described it as you've you've purchased an additional 75 acres surrounding? Uh, 54. So it's 75 total, total. To 75 total. Okay. And so, um, and that's the part of why we did originally look at this property was for the ability to purchase additional property to insulate. Obviously, obviously for us, we're making a significant investment, not only in our building, our structure, and our dirt work, but also in the aircraft itself. It doesn't make any sense for us to allow people to come in and build next to us. And so we've taken every opportunity we can to discuss uh, future needs with uh, current landowners, and we acquired this property last month. And so we have this acreage here immediately west and then following all the way up and around and we border the fishers and the bullens up on the north side and then we own all this up here and this is currently encapsulated for service 30, 30 acres worth. And then I guess just to speak a little bit about the dual helipad situation, uh, obviously safety is number one priority for everybody. And so environmentally the aircraft need to take off directly into the wind. Uh, we did our wind studies and of reference the NOAA wind studies and typically we're going to be safe taking off from the lower helipad which is going to isolate the aircraft to along the highway 16a corridor we're working with the DOT on getting the sign signage put up for that and we're also working on lowering the speed limit just for safety um, but in the odd event that we do have a strong westerly wind on cold front days or certain environmental days we do reserve that um, request to take off directly west and so that would be up at the upper pad, which is currently right here. This is a little bit outdated photo. And so when winds are predominantly out of the west, we'll have to take off from the upper pad here. But normally we will be using the Highway 16A corridor, making sure that the noise of the helicopter stays with the noise of the road. <clears throat> Other questions? What did the DOT say? Um, are, are they supportive of reducing the speed limit on that road? Um, Maybe. <laughs> is it, is uh, it 55 through it's there? It's 45, 45, and we're requesting <coughs> 35 going into there with the addition. That's coming into the intersection to the Y. And, yeah. you know, there's quite a, there's a few different studies they have to do in order to make that happen. <coughs> We've just requested it and started that ball in motion. And so, you know, right now we do have an approved right-of-way um, right going into there that was existing before we bought the property. But we are working with the DOT to make sure that we do have the proper signage and try and get that uh, speed limit reduced because that seems like everybody's going faster than 45. Definitely. Probably so. Yeah. Well, I know that when we looked at the property closer <clears throat> into town, when someone was looking at putting helicopters there, people were concerned about people gawking you know, and watching the helicopters take off and land and stuff. Right. And that's uh, 65 yeah. yeah, and yeah. you know that's four lanes of traffic right now. We're at forty-five and two lanes of traffic. We would like to see it at thirty-five, and so people will, will more than likely be doing forty-five. But there is a concern uh, for people looking at traffic, and that's always a concern for any attraction, including Mount Rushmore. So. 
Is the helipad then elevated from the road? Uh, yeah. I guess what I'm kind of wondering, I mean, like on Highway 16 situation, it's kind of flat across there. So, I mean, it's really easy to it's see really that, to see. try to look for that. But, I mean, if the helipad's more elevated, it's going to be more difficult for people to kind of gawk at the takeoff. It's up so, from the road. Yeah. Yeah. There are somewhat outdated pictures, too. It doesn't. It look, it, these are kind of outdated pictures. Oh. It looks a little bit different than this now. Better. So, it yes, looks a little it, bit better. It looks better. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Good word. <laughs> oh, can, uh, the conditional use permit review, the same distribution as far as notice to neighbors as previously? Um, um, with it being reviewed, there's no notification requirement. Um, Conditional use permit reviews don't require certified mailings or mailings of any kind to the neighbors, but um, the neighbors do pretty actively watch this one. Um, the phone call that I received on Friday, I believe, was from one of the neighbors. He didn't identify himself, but um, from the sound of his voice, it sounded familiar. Well, we did have a lot of comments before, and that's why. But I mean, I think, you know, kind of this dressing up the site and, the, you know, before his runoff concerns and some of the carry the runoff and lack of erosion control and, and it sounds like you're taking care of that so we did have the DENR out there and the engineer from the DENR said it was the best BMPs for stormwater pollution prevention she's ever seen and so I just made sure that uh, TJ told the office about that because we did make <laughs> quite a few adjustments and got a little bit more educated in stormwater pollution prevention I have a question. Have you actually made contact with Life Flight and the National Guard yet, or is that just well, something I in the actively future? fly for Life Flight and the National Guard, and so I haven't made official contact from the business to the organizations. Uh, you know, our concern, I, I guess, to address the the tour hours of operation. Obviously, there's a repetitive nature to the tours, and we want to be good stewards not only to the land-based users but also our neighbors. Identify in a season that splits the operating. Uh, calendar in half I thought was fair and then you know adhering to their hours of operation was fair what we'd like to do is maintain the ability to have serve the community to be a good neighbor you know obviously that's in our favor for the residents of Keystone um, you know and having that ability for Black Hills Life Flight to come to a improved helipad that is approved by the FAA and has a windsock and meet the ambulance serves a purpose not only for the people of Keystone, but possibly also the residents that live in between Keystone and Hill City. As far as the National Guard, you know, that's kind of thinking outside the box, but having the ability to do firefighting operations if they need to put a water truck or a fuel truck there to ensure that they have the ability to serve the community. Um, for us, we we're concerned about being able to utilize the aircraft outside the tour, <clears throat> the tour season uh, to support the needs of the community being they recently brought a helicopter in from Fairbanks, Alaska to, to, to do the big game surveys with the bighorn sheep. It was on the cover of the Rapid City Journal this spring, and we'd like to reserve that right to be able to contract out and utilize the aircraft for those purposes. And also in natural disaster needs, we usually get contracted to fly the power lines and sometimes uh, pipelines and stuff like that, depending on what's going on. So we just want to be able to use, utilize the helipad outside the tourist season at non-approved hours of operation to serve the community. And essentially, it'll be you know three minutes to start the aircraft up and two minutes to depart. And so it's five minutes of um, noise at an inconvenient time, possibly. But we think the disturbance will be frequency will be minimal and the time will be minimal as well. And so we'd like to reserve that right to be able to utilize the helipad for non-tour uh, operations. Oh, Mr. Chair, you know, Andy, I just want to mention something. When we were going through the um, situation of putting the helicopter flights on 16, one of the things we heard from the concerned neighbors is that they were flying all year round and so on. And actually, it, it was these contracted places or, or um, companies that were bringing in their um, helicopters to do things for the Forest Service and environmental issues and so on. And it, so I, I don't know, I just... Sometimes I worry because it wasn't really fair to those folks who were trying to put their operation there on 16 because they were blamed for a lot of the helicopter flights that were going over them that they had nothing to do with. So just as a little bit of a warning, I, I don't know if you, you don't have as many neighbors there, but maybe you 
develop a way to contact and say, you know, we're, we're flying for the Forest Service today and sure. you might hear us. Just, just because it was a big, big deal and uh, it wasn't fair to the folks trying to set their business up that they got blamed for something they had nothing to do with. Certainly. And just for the record, I mean, they are still in business and operating out of sure. Keystone and Hill City, and they do have the ability to contract for those. Sure. Um, and to me, you know, working with the National Guard over the last 17 years, I have seen even uh, guardsmen from other state come in and utilize our area in June for mm -hmm. the exercise. And they don't have the same respect that we have because we have to see the user, land-based users every single day. And this is our operating environment. And so obviously we're a lot more respectful to the ground uh, based users just because we want to ensure that we have somewhere to train and the same goes for these guys coming out here and doing these contracts you know they're not they wanna, from here and yeah. they just want to but they weren't even taking off those those helicopters were taking off from the airport to do their mm -hmm. jobs whatever they were hired to do it, it, it's just that it it got way out of proportion to what was really happening and um i I recognize what you want to do, and I'm fine with it. I think you, it's great, but I'm just saying that folks really um, distorted everything about it. And I'm kind of just saying, you know, watch that. If you hear something, you might want to react to it instead of going, uh. No, absolutely. Thank you for no. that recommendation. Mr. Chair? No. Uh, I guess I'm absolutely for this. I'm prior military, so I've been up in some of the um, National Guard Burge because I was a medic and I was down in um, Edgemont for the fire down there as well and be an EMS. So do your neighbors, are they familiar with your intentions to have outside of the regular tourist hours as well, opening it up to your contracting aspects and to the, the, the medical and the military aspect of it, I'm not so worried about because if you have life flight flying in, if you're going to complain about life flight, you know, that's a little, that's a little <laughs> different. I, I have a problem with you complaining about us trying to save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. um, so, but just out of curiosity, are they aware that there might be mm -hmm. these other contracted events during natural disasters and stuff as well? Or did you only talk to them about the tourist side of it? I've talked to quite a few people about the operation, including my neighbors, my bankers, um, and county officials as well, and the FAA. I don't want to go on the record and say exactly what I said to them, but I have done my best to try and fully disclose the entire uh, concept of the operation to everybody I've talked to and not tried to hide anything from anybody. So, you know, obviously if there is a concern with uh, the neighbors, we're going to address it because for us, you know, as the conditional use permit is written, any complaint takes time out of my day. Uh, to come in here and dispute the complaint. And so obviously helicopters make noise and I think we're all familiar with what's going on in Keystone and what happened uh, this spring down there. And so for us, it's just trying to be good neighbors and good stewards of the land as well to ensure that we're not wasting our time coming back in front of you to hear the complaints. And so that's where we're trying to strike a balance with the hours of operation, the season for the repetitiveness of the tours. And, you know, I, I'd like to say it's going to be very lucrative and we're going to be really busy doing these contracts, but they're pretty few and far between. And so I'm not overly concerned about it. I just wanted to make sure we didn't pigeonhole ourselves in the corner and create a situation where we had to come back and request uh, more latitude from you guys with, you know, knowing full well that this is something that we anticipate doing and trying to make sure that we have some work for the helicopter over the winter when we can't do our com commercial air tours. Um, what I have noticed being uh, on the ground underneath the helicopters for the last nine years is that when the tour season does uh, slope off after October, the helicopter noise impact is significantly higher. And so that's why we're saying we'll just shut down operations, consolidate into doing other things with the helicopter versus flying the tours. Other questions? Staff's recommendation is for extension of conditional use permit 14-23 uh, with 19 conditions. Does that entertain a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 16. Good morning, Kelsey Roush, Planning Department. Um, item 16 is a layout plat 16-14 for Cindy Dickmeyer. Um, this property has been previously platted into um, lots one and two of Boyum subdivision. Uh, she currently only owns lot one and would like to subdivide it into two separate lots. Um, lots one R and lot three of Boyum subdivision. The property is currently zoned planned unit development. Um, there, um, the layout plat that was submitted did have several um, incorrect statements on it, so there will be need to, there will need to be um, a couple things updated and changed on that. She, the reason be, for this layout plat is she has been planning to sell the property. It's been kind of hard for her to take care of the entire thing. Um, she would like to sell part of it or. I, she's not really positive. She has recently hired a property manager. Um, she's planning to keep the property as is through the winter and see how things go and then possibly in the summer do a, um, you know, finish platting and, and sell the property if things don't go well this winter. Um, do you have any questions? It's, it's kind of a confusing property. The planning and development will need to be amended um, if the plat does, if she does decide to finish platting this, um, just to make things, since they're changing it to two lots, it'll have to be changed a little bit. But um, any questions? Questions or? for Kelsey? Mr. Chair, I have some questions. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't understand where lot 1R and lot 3 were proposed to even be platted on the on the plat in the packet. Could you help me understand that? Yes. Okay. So let me, I don't know if I have it. And I don't have it on this, on the um, presentation. But on the last page of the packet, um, it shows the um, layout plat that the, or the surveyor submitted. Um, if you look up in the upper east, <laughs> northeast corner of the of lot 1R, you'll see a lot 3 there. Um, along the road um, easements there is showing a bunch of easements. There's those darker black lines with dark black dots, kind of. <laughs> that's that, that's going to be lot 3. It's going to be very small, 0 0.72 <coughs> acres. Um, it's basically just cutting off a fourplex off of the rest of the property. It's a very small little piece. Okay. Um, they are. That's one of the things that we need them to fix when it comes to the final plan. It looks it's like very it. hard to read. <laughs> so. Well, it also just if you kind of compare the actual picture with mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. it looks to me like they're going to have some variances they're going to have to deal with in location away from lot line. Possibly. Yep. We, we did not receive a um, building layout plan or anything regarding the lot lines yet, so that will be one of our requirements Move if she decides to move forward. Oh, so she, yeah, because that has that, ac that access, so that access goes with yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, okay. She decided to, to include part of the, you know, that easement mm -hmm. on that lot to give it more space, but... We'll just have to see. I know the septic system is also close to not, I don't know for sure if it's on the right lot, so yeah. for that fourplex, but that will have to be all completely verified before anything can be finaled. Well, the, the conditions, uh, I'm just looking at review them real quick again, but are you specifically asking for location of the buildings on the, to, to verify that? that eight foot lot line or minor drainage and utility easements will be met? Because it, it looks like it could be close. On. I don't, it doesn't look like we have one of those for, as a condition, but we can surely add that if we want to. Or if not even the footprints of the building, just a statement, I guess that verification that the- That everything meets the The, the eight foot minor yep. drainage and utility easements. Are clear. Yeah, and in in the the PUD itself has um, several conditions. Um, I think it's 
how many? 16? 8. Sure. PUD has, and it, it has requirements based on um, setbacks as well in the PUD. So as when that gets goes to be reviewed as well, those will be looked at again. But we can definitely add a condition to require building setbacks and dimensions and everything prior to final. I, I'm thinking it's maybe you should mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she's going to go on down the road and then she ends up with being going mm -hmm. through all the variances and mm -hmm. all of that again and mm -hmm. it, it it might help her mm -hmm. to do it more up front mm -hmm. than to. Yeah. Other questions for Kelsey? Um, the, the plat indicates that there's a water line shown uh, on, and I don't see the location of that water line. I'm kind of looking at the sketch that you have up there and comparing that to the plat. Yeah, it's not located on the on the layout plat, so that's one of the conditions is to include that on the layout plat. Let's see. Okay. Number seven. So she will be responsible for returning a revised yes. layout plan yep. to you guys yes. for review. The surveyor approval. must, yeah, will be required to update everything. Like the the firm panel number is incorrect. The um, plat heading is incorrect. There's several things that need to be updated. So our, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sort of not ready for prime time. No. A lot that uh, there's a lot there's here. a lot in here usually layout plats don't have this many conditions but yeah so um, maybe you could help educate me on the on the process then if we if, if we approve this today we're approving that they have to do all of this or we're approving the layout plat period we're approving the layout plat based on these conditions they have to meet these conditions before they can um, submit the <clears throat> the final plat to the register of deeds they have to have all this stuff correct on the final plat before anything can be approved for the final. The purpose of a layout plat is basically to do this very thing, is to identify all of the problems before they actually move forward mm -hmm. in the platting process. So um, this is one that we've found several more issues with than we usually identify in a layout plat process, but this is the purpose of the layout plat, is the very beginning where we kind of iron out everything that needs to be addressed before the plat goes through. So in a situation like this, it could realistically be a long period of time before you would see the next phase of this plat because they have to go back and address all of these concerns and these issues. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Staff's recommendation is for approval layout plat PL 16-14 with 16 conditions. I think we're kind of hearing that we do want to at least modify uh, if you do it in one as far as that the minor and utility drain easements that are being created are clear buildings, mm -hmm. structures. Mm -hmm. I guess I would suggest that. I guess we don't have a motion on the floor yet. But uh, anyway, staff's recommendation is for, uh, with 16 conditions, to entertain a motion to that effect or changes to any of the items. Um, I'll make that motion. Second. <clears throat> uh, officially, do you want to, as part of your motion, do you want to modify it for the building location, as I suggested? Yes. Okay. Uh, Clear on the note minutes. <laughs> okay. So, There's mud. So that would make a 14, 17, 17. So we have a motion and second further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item 17 is the county board report. The county board of commissioners concurred with the planning commission's recommendations from the July 25th, 2016 planning commission meeting. Items from the public and I don't see anyone back there. Uh, so we'll move on to items from the staff, the building report. Yes, the building permit report. 
Um, so um, you have a copy of the building permit report. A couple of things of significance. We are still down on single family residences. Um, mobile homes are up quite a bit from last year. Um, there is still the discrepancy that you see number, um, item number 328, other non-residential is way down as you can see from last year. Um, that is still due to a change that we had in our tracking system. 328 used to be for our accessory structures, our barns, our sheds, all of that kind of stuff. Um, that um, subtype disappeared from our tracking system um, and we can't seem to get it back on a consistent basis. We get it back for about a week and then it goes away. So we've started putting all of those type of things into the category 437 non-residential additions. So that's why you see that category went way up and 328 went way down. Um, but overall we are still down. Um, we're catching up from last year but we are still down from last year in terms of number of permits and also valuation. Questions for Cassie on the building permit report. Items for membership. Anyone have any items? I guess uh, I do on one. I guess I didn't think it was appropriate. It's related to 14. Uh, and I didn't think it was appropriate to pull it for the action, but a question I had on that is, you know, a lot of times when we are Looking at a property, we'll continue it because they clean it, you need to clean up junk or whatever like that. You know, to me here we have obvious they're they're locking a section line gate that they aren't supposed to. Uh, is there any enforcement action being carried to to remove that? Uh, that should be open to the public. Yes. Um, now that his construction permit is ended, um, he will. This will generate a couple of different ordinance violations on the property. Um, his asphalt piles will need to go now that he no longer has a construction permit. Um, so his asphalt piles will need to be removed. And then also we do plan on addressing um, the topic of the locked gate in a section line. So um, the ending of the construction permit will spur other ordinance issues. And my understanding was like Black Hills Power had a separate lock so they could get past the gate for maintenance of their facility. Is that correct? Um, we've heard a, a couple of different versions of that story. We've heard that um, that there was a different lock that Black Hills Power had. We've also heard that Black Hills Power had um, the combination to the lock that's on there. Um, most recently, Brittany, correct me if I'm wrong, we were told that it was actually a, a dummy lock and that it's not actually locked, but um, Mike, our ordinance officer, tried to go out there and it is, it is locked. Um, so we're not really sure what is actually going on with that lock, but it is something that we will look at further because it is a section line road and it's not supposed to be, um, if it is gated, it has to be easily opened by anyone from the public and that is a, a heavy duty gate and it is locked, so. I understand that section line has not been vacated. No, Please. not anything that we've been able to find, no. Okay, any other items from membership? I would entertain a motion then for adjournment. Moved. Second. Thank you. Motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Close. Same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.